Hi everybody, this is Brent, the EdTech Principal from EdTech.tv, and today I want to start off with a question for you. What's a nine-letter word for an intersecting word puzzle? Got it? Well, I'm not going to quite tell you the exact answer, I think you probably have it, but today we're going to be talking all about it with the app called Cruciverbalist for iPhone and for iPad. Um, I've spent a lot of time playing with different online crossword makers and uh, you know all the different ones that are out there, and I've never really found one that it quite satisfied me with all the functions that I needed, and so I was really happy to find this app. Uh, Cruciverbalist will help you make crosswords, uh, and it really is a pretty in-depth thing. It helps you out with a lot of different functions. So today I thought we'd take a look at it, because if you're anything like me, you want to make crosswords for your students, and you want them to be good and engaging. Um, and if you get really into it, you can make some pretty crazy ones, but uh, we're going to keep it fairly simple for today. So let's jump into it. Normally I like to work in landscape mode to help you guys see the best, but uh, since this app is designed for portrait mode, we're going to do our best here and we're going to work in portrait mode. So let's open up the app. And the first thing you're going to see are two choices, either a plus button or a book. The plus button is for new crosswords and the book is for ones that you have saved in the past. So let's open up the new one. And it'll give you a choice to save or to sorry, to create from scratch or to use a saved template. We're going to create from scratch. Now here's where it starts with everything. You can choose the size of your crossword. Uh, you know, they give you predefined ones that are common sizes, seven by seven up to 21 by 15. Um, or you can also create up here at the top, you can create your own custom sizes. Uh, but for today, we're just gonna go with the simple seven by seven. And it gives you the choice here. It says, do you wanna use the iCloud or do you wanna store locally? Uh, that's up to you, I'll store locally. And here we start. As you can see, it's starting off with a completely blank slate, uh, which is pretty cool um, because it's going to let you do whatever you want to do. So let's take a look at the different functions here. The very first thing we're going to do is name this. So up at the top, we're going to get rid of that. All right, so we can name it. That's fine. And then the square on the left here, of course, is the actual grid of the crossword. Uh, right to the right of it, it says across and down. Those are where the clues are going to be. Um, those are pretty straightforward and most of us have worked with a crossword before. Uh, the next thing down, you're gonna see this uh, box down here at the bottom. So it's kind of between the letters and the actual crossword, this section. This is where you're actually gonna do most of the work. So the first thing it says is edit. Um, you're going to start off with editing because that's where you're going to put in the actual words. If I were to start at one across, all I have to do is start typing in the word. So let's say I'm going to say teacher. That fits in right across seven letters. Um, and so you can see that the word I have is teacher. And then the cool thing is that on the right hand side, it gives you a bunch of clues. So if I wanted to choose any of these, for example, if I wanted to choose head of the class, I could just tap on that. And then as we move up back to the clue on the top right, it says head of the class. But then maybe I'll decide I don't want to do that. So I'll move back down to the clue and I'll tap here. I do want to clear it and maybe I'll say instead um, Apple earner um, and then again you can see that my clue has changed there on the top right so that's how you create um, any word that you want there you can just fill it in directly okay now let's say I want to go to two down um, if I tap on the number two, it's just going to make it a blue. It's going to highlight that particular one. But if I double tap, then it's bringing me to two down. And I might choose another word that starts with E. Now, let's say I can't come up with a seven-letter word that starts with an E. Well, the nice thing is that I can click on this little magnifying glass, this search tool. And they give me a ton of possible choices. 
right? So maybe I want to do um, earbuds, okay? And then over here, right on the right, it gives me again the clue. It says iPod accessories or iPod attachments. Maybe I want to use iPod attachments. Um, and then I just click on the check button that's right there in the middle and it fills it in for me. So this is how you go about creating individual words all throughout your grid. At the bottom of the keyboard, we'll see a couple extra functions. Um, the first one on the bottom left, you'll see this is the switch function and it serves the same function as double tapping on a letter. So if I tap on it, it'll switch me back to horizontal using the, the blue letter as my pivot point or back again. Now on the right, you'll see a white square, a black square, and a little uh, switch square. So any real crossword fan knows that a proper crossword actually is um, a mirror image of itself across the diagonal angle. So if I were to, for example, highlight a square right here, the blue one, and I hit the black square, it's going to give me a mirrored image right in the opposite spot. Uh, now that could be really useful if I want to do a proper crossword, but a lot of times as educators and teachers, it's not quite possible for us to fit our words that we want in there, especially if we're doing a vocabulary crossword. Um, so at the very bottom right, you can see the little blue highlighted section. You can just tap that again to turn it off. And then if you want to turn off a highlighted word, you just, uh, tap on the white square for it again it'll it'll undo it for you so wherever you want to make your words just tap um, and then if you want to make a black spot tap it and then hit the black square it's as easy as that now there are some other cool functions that we should definitely take a look at if we're going to slide the box over to the left we can see some information about our words so um, just the general information uh, the word spacing, the amount of letters, uh, that's really going to get, you know, it's probably beyond what most of us are going to want, but it might be useful if you're saying, hey, I'm not using the letter K enough, especially if you're working with a, a younger group, you might find that that's pretty important. Um, so let's slide over to file. Uh, this is a pretty useful section. So you can put in the author information. So I might say, EdTech TV. Uh, if I was going to copyright it, I might put in the name or something or the year. Um, and uh, here, the three buttons, it says print, delete, and template. If I hit print, it will let me send out to an air printer, anything that's connected to my iPad by a Wi-Fi connection, I can print it directly. If I delete, of course, that will delete the whole file. And then template is uh, if I wanted to save the basic template so maybe I put in a couple black spots in a cool pattern or something like that maybe I want to save that template um, again that's up to you I haven't quite found a need for it specifically but I haven't made a ton either so um, if you're using a regular pattern or maybe if a pattern that maybe spells out something I'm not totally sure now the section that says sharing is really cool. This is kind of your, your number one feature here. Uh, it says unfilled, filled, web publish, and CMFC. Um, the first one is unfilled. So let's say that this is my uh, crossword here, and I want to send this out unfilled. I would probably want to send it out as a PDF. Then it gives me all of these different apps that I can send it to, but I'll probably send it by mail. And here we go. You can see right there, it's filled in with the information. Now, obviously, I didn't do a lot here. I didn't create a full crossword, so it doesn't look very good. But if I were to create a full crossword, then it would send everything out as a blank template. So this would be the one that I would print out for my students. I'll delete that. I'm not going to send it now. However, if I wanted a filled one for myself, I could do the same thing. PDF, out by mail, and here it shows me one with the actual letters filled in. So that's my key, or you know, if I'm sending that off to someone else or for the students later to look at and see how they did.
Web Publish is a cool feature that lets you publish it directly up online. Uh, you do have to create an account, but it is green and it's very eco-friendly. So if you don't want to waste paper, I'd definitely take a look at it. Um, it's pretty cool, but I think you might have to pay if you want to do it a lot. Um, finally, the last one, uh, CMFC. Don't mess around with it. It's not worth it. Uh, let's just jump right into the rest of it. The next section as we slide over is picture. You can actually put a picture into the background, which is super cool. So all you have to do is hit import, and it'll take any picture from your camera roll, and it'll put it right into the background. You can see that it's faded there in the background. Um, you can you know, delete those and things if you want, but if you have a special picture or it's related to a special unit, you might wanna have something back there just as a little decoration. Um, you are not committed to doing that, but you know, again, like I said, it might be, uh, it might be a nice addition. Uh, please be careful with this blackened unfilled cells. When you click on that button, what it does is it says anything that's not filled in will be blackened, but in the case of using a picture, it'll just clear out everything except for those specific cells. So if I click it now, you'll see that the EdTech logo right here, the EdTech TV logo, will be kind of more clear, and that's because everything is that's not there is considered blacked out. So... Um, so it looks nice uh, and it might really bring out the picture in the background depending on how many words you have filled in. Now my favorite function here is the last one here called auto place. Uh, what I'm actually gonna do is go back and create a brand new one to show you its full power. So I'm gonna create a new word, uh, new crossword, create from scratch, seven by seven. I'm going to go directly over to auto place and here I can fill in whatever words I want to have show up in my uh, crossword as long as it's within the limits of you know the length that I gave it. So you do have to maybe mess around with it a couple times because it it might not give you perfect words you know you might not be giving it a, a combination that's actually realistic but it's pretty good so let's take a look at this. Okay, I just gave it those uh, five words. So, so if I click on place, it'll start searching. Here it gave me 20 different possibilities of possible solutions here on how I might wanna lay these out. So then it's just an aesthetic choice. If I click on next, it'll kind of lay it out in different ways. Maybe I like that one, for example. So I like that one at the top right, I'm gonna click on confirm. And then it says, uh, do you want to fill in the black ones? I would say not quite yet. So let's just place the letters. So now I've got all of my words um, across. Now the first one is EdTech. It doesn't recognize that word, so I might have to create my own clue. the process of bringing technology into class. Now if I tap on the T for teacher and double tap on it, again, I can choose if I want to use any of these clues. So again, I like, um, you know, head of the class. And I'm gonna go right through all of them. Now be careful here, it, see, it says learn dash C. What this does is it's recognizing this all as one word, so I have to fill in the blank with a black spot. So I'll tap here, I'm gonna hit the black square. Now remember that it did the mirror image, in this case it turned out to be safe, it didn't block off any letters that I already wanted. And then I'll go back, and now it knows the word learn, and I might choose any of the vocabulary words that it wants here. Be a good student. I don't know if that's the best definition of learn, but um, web, again, same problem. So I do wanna make sure that the letters around it are blacked out, but not necessarily with the uh, mirror image. So I'm gonna black that one out. I'm gonna black this one out, and then I'll go back to web and uh, 
if I'm trying to talk about an internet web, maybe these aren't the choices that I want, so I'll fill in my own clue. And finally, class. Now be, be aware again that it gives you the word as dash dash class, so I do need to fill these in. Now my word is class, and I can say schoolroom group. And I am done. So I've got all these words here, but you know I've got a couple extra spaces, so maybe I want to fill something in. Let's take a look at how we would do that. If at five down I have the opportunity for C blank N blank blank, I can choose to click on the uh, magnifying glass again. And here it's giving me a choice of all of these words that I might choose to use, right? Um, canoe, candy, you know, some of these are kind of wild words, but you can go right through and check them. Now maybe I'm thinking, hmm, you know what, I only want it to be a four letter word. So again, I'll click, I'll black it out, go back to it, look up a word, and it's giving me my different choices. And the word I want is cone. And again, I can choose ice cream holder, and I am set, okay? So I'm gonna hit the, the check button, it fills it in. I've got the nice choice that I want, so I'm gonna go back to picture because I want that picture in the background. I'll import the EdTech logo. I'm gonna blacken unfilled cells so you can see what it looks like. Then I'll go to file, and I'll share it, I'll share an unfilled one or a filled one, but before they do that, I might wanna give my students a clue or two. So what I do is I choose a couple of letters that I want to show up on an unfilled chart. So for example, if I want the T from EdTech and Teacher at uh, two down, I can hold that down with my finger and you'll see the little eye shows up. The eyeball there means that it's going to show up on both sides. Maybe I also want the N to show up. That'll show up, and then maybe I want the C in class to show up. Okay, so I like those three letters as my kind of clue words. So check it out, when I go to sharing unfilled, I'll do PDF, out to mail, And you can see right here in my mail, I've got those three letters, T, N, and C, my clue letters. I've got all my definitions down there on the bottom, across and down. I've got my hints, I've got my background picture. I am ready to send this. All I have to do is send it off directly to uh, my own email address or right to the printer if I wanted to do it that way. Very, very cool stuff. Um, this is exactly what I've been looking for for a long time. And, you know, people have gotten better with their crossword programs online, but this is the one that I found that I really think is, is truly useful and, you know, the way that I would probably bring it into the classroom. So um, I hope you find this useful. I hope you play around with it a little bit. And uh, let's jump over to the homework. Wow, today was probably one of the longest uh, tutorials we've done here so far, so I hope it's some useful stuff for you. Let's jump right into it. Um, your homework today is, of course, download Cruciverbalist. Uh, if you can remember how to spell it, if you can't, just come right back to edtech.tv and I'll have it written down there for you. Uh, next is upload a sample crossword. You know, you can do the online feature and you can share that out for free. So upload one because I want to play your crossword and then tweet me the sample at edtechprincipal. Um, I'd love to see what you come up with. I might not be able to answer all your questions, but I definitely want to see it. Uh, as always, really want to hear from you. Uh, shoot me a tweet at edtechprincipal. You can always follow me on YouTube at edtechprincipal and facebook.com slash edtechtv. Looking forward to seeing what you guys create out there, and I'm sure your students are going to be real happy with whatever you make. Talk care. <laughs> Talk care. Talk to you soon, and uh, see you later. Take care. Bye-bye.